Hello, everyone. Good evening. Thank you very much for joining in to watch the next event from Anselm One Process. I'm Brian Mark, the artistic director for this project that I've been curating since 2017. This concert is called Processing Global Warming, which is an event that was supposed to take place live in Brooklyn, New York City, exactly six months ago today, but has been postponed due to COVID-19. Therefore, a few performers and I on this program decided to bring this concert virtually for now, and will feature eight works pertaining to climate change in some shape or form. This type of concert is unique from what I've done with previous engagements, as it pertains to a massive global issue that is threatening the future state of the Earth's climate. These eight particular works, two of them being world premieres, will be a combination of archetypes pertaining to nature, water, sea creatures in Greek mythology, natural disasters, and a work based on Greta Thunberg's famous speech at the 2019 UN's Climate Action Summit. The composers who will be programmed on this concert include John Lin Chua, John Adams, Allison Loggins Hall, Evan Fine, Ian Dickey, Judy Benso, Darian Thomas, and myself. Most of the composers on this concert have provided a short video introduction of their works. The musicians who perform for this concert come from various parts of the world, with Rose Hegley in Boston, Massachusetts, Allison Clare in Bergen, New Jersey. Helen Vidovich in London, England, Madeline Hawking in Budapest, Hungary, and finally, Philip Snyder and myself, both located here in New York City. There will be three works that feature an accompanied video installation, two created by myself and one from Philip Snyder. In addition, we are hoping to raise donations from this concert for any company that is tackling the global warming crisis. So we decided on a coalition for rainforest nations. If you can, kindly go to www.rainforestcoalition.org forward slash donations if you would like to help out this organization and a greater need for awareness of this vital issue. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the concert. Hello everybody, my name is John Lin Chua and I am a Singaporean composer. I well remember watching the famous speech given by young Swedish environmental activist Greta Thunberg in September 2019. There was a great deal of media controversy over the speech and over this young lady. But at the end of the day, her message on climate change was clear and it shook me. I started to think about my own role as a composer and how I could help strengthen that message through my own voice and platform. And so I started to compose this piece, How Dare You, featuring quotes on climate change by various individuals from all over. As an artist, whenever we create art, we use up many resources. For instance, as a composer, I think about the amount of paper and electricity used up in the whole process of putting an idea to paper, getting musicians together to rehearse, to finally presenting that work on the stage of a concert hall. Hence, when conceptualizing this particular work, I wanted to del deliver the message on climate change using minimum resources available. And so, I explicitly stated in my performance notes that performers should only use genuine waste material which have not been specially purchased or consumed for the purposes of this performance. Also, it is preferred that concert venues which use vast amounts of energy and resources to run not be specially procured for the purposes of staging a performance of this piece. And so I am happy that this piece will be presented virtually, reducing our carbon footprint. I also encouraged musicians to print the sheet music on reused paper if needed in order to reduce paper waste. Besides drawing on the meaning of the quotes used, I also wanted to feature the purely sonic quality of the text, creating a work that highlights timbre and texture. 
I hope you will enjoy this work. My message is that we'll be watching you. For more than 30 years, the science has been crystal clear. You are failing us. Because if you really understood the situation and still kept on failing to act, you would be evil. My message is that we'll be watching you. For more than 30 years, the science has been crystal clear. My message is that we'll be watching you. You are failing us. Because if you really understood the situation and still kept on failing to act, then you would be evil. People are suffering. People are dying. For more than 30 Entire years, the science has been crystal crashing. clear. My message is that we'll be watching you. You are failing us. People are suffering. People are you have dying. Stolen my dreams Entire and ecosystems my are collapsing. With your empty words. My message is that we'll be watching you. People are suffering. Because if you really People are dying. the situation and Entire still keep on failing to are act, then you would be evil. You are failing us. My childhood For more than 30 years, the science has been crystal clear. My message is that will be watching you. Because if you really understood the situation, still kept on failing to act, then you'd be evil. You are failing us. You have stolen my dreams, my childhood, with your empty words. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire epidemics are collapsed. You are failing us. You are failing us. You are Climate change is the Everest of all problems, the thorniest challenge facing humankind. Climate change is happening. Humans are causing it. Climate and change I think this is, is perhaps the most borders. serious environmental issue facing are. us. Rich and poor, 
small and big. Climate change does not respect border. It the cost of our success large, is the exhaustion poor, of natural resources, leading to energy, prices, climate change, pollution, and the destruction of our habitat. If you exhaust natural resources, there will be nothing left for your children. If we continue Are in the same direction, humankind is headed for some fight for the earth, if, you put a if not extinction. A pot and slowly turn up the heat, it won't turn back. It's coming home to roof over the next the 50 years or so. It's not just climate back. change. It's the sheer space, places to grow food for this enormous horde. Either we limit our population growth or the natural world will do it for us. And the natural world is doing it for us right now. Climate change is the Everest of all problems. Estonia's challenge is to face the Everest Climate change is happening. Humans are causing it. And I think this is perhaps the most serious environmental issue facing us. Are humans any smarter than frogs in a pot? If you put a frog in a pot and slowly turn up the heat, it won't jump out. Instead, it will enjoy the nice warm bath until it's cooked to death. Climate change is the Everest of all problems. Thorny is challenged facing humankind. The saddest fact of climate change and the chief reason we should be concerned about finding a proper response is that the country will get harder already among the poorest and most long suffering. Climate change is not going to affect the world. Climate change. 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 My message is that we'll be watching you. The eyes of all future generations are upon you. We will not let you get away with this. If you choose to fail us, I say we will never forgive you. The world, the world is, waking is waking up, up and, and change is coming, whether you like it or, not. You like it or not. The world, the world is waking up and change, and change is coming, coming whether you like, it or, like it or not. The world is the waking, world up, is waking and up and change is coming, change whether, you is like coming. Not. whether you like it or not. Change, change is, is coming, coming whether, whether you like, like it or, or not. not. China Gates is a short piano piece composed by John Adams in 1977. This was one of Adams' first mature works which he wrote for the then 17-year-old Sarah Cahill during a rainy season in Northern California. With regard to this work, the composer himself has stated the following. China Gates is an almost perfect palindrome and it oscillates between two modal worlds. Only it does so with extreme delicacy. It strikes me now as a piece calling for real attention to detail of dark, light, and the shadows that exist between them. He has also suggested that the constant eighth notes that you will hear in this piece reflect the steady rainfall of the time. John Adams soon gave this work a companion titled Phrygian Gates, which is a much longer work with similar techniques finished the following year. I hope you enjoy this performance.
Hello, my name is Allison Loggins Hall, and I am the composer of Homeland for solo flute. Homeland was commissioned by the Texas Flute Society for the Myrna Brown competition, which they host, which is a big flute competition here in the United States for young artists. And it was written during a time in 2018 um, when there was a constant news cycle between the hurricane in Puerto Rico, Hurricane Maria, um, the civil war crisis in Syria, and domestic and social unrest here in the United States, very similar to how things are today. Um, so there's just this constant rotation of stories um, highlighting um, domestic issues, issues at home, um, people's homes being destroyed either by a natural disaster or a political disaster, a social disaster. Um, and I began to question, you know, what, is, what does home be, mean when it becomes a place of unrest, when it becomes a place that um, maybe is not so safe to be? Um, maybe it's a place you can no longer be um, or a place where you're no longer welcomed. Um, what happens to the concept of home, a place that we normally associate with comfort and safety and, and love even? Um, so while the piece doesn't necessarily answer these questions, um, they're, so, they're certainly posed and um, that's just what was really on my mind at the time, what I was thinking about when I wrote the piece. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. Again, this is Homeland and I'm Allison Loggins Hall.
Hello, I'm Evan Fine, the composer of the next piece. Thanks for tuning in. It's really an honor to be here with you and to be included on this program tonight. Polar Shores is the first movement of a suite for unaccompanied violin I composed in 2016. Each of the five movements of this piece were inspired by uh, something that is in some way remote or extreme or represents the borders between two different kinds of fields or zones, for instance, land and ocean, or atmosphere and outer space. The other movements, by the way, are Marianas Trench, Ionosphere, Fingertips, and Quantum Fields. I've always found these kinds of boundary zones to be really interesting, um, particularly as a traveler, uh, which I used to do in a different world. Uh, I frequently have traveled to the Arctic. It's a place that I find to be really, really interesting. So the first movement, Polar Shores, um, is representative of that very frigid, but also very lively and otherworldly kind of zone that one experiences in places like uh, coastal Iceland, which is a part of the world I really love to visit. Uh, and it's also a part of the world that's very much on the front lines of climate change. So I hope you enjoyed this piece, and I'd especially like to thank Brian Mark Ensemble and Process, and Alice and Claire, who's going to play this for you. Thanks very much. Enjoy.
Hi there, my name's Ian Dickey, and I'm the composer of the piece White Parasol. It's for solo piano, and I'd like to thank Brian Mark for programming this along with Ensemble and Process. And it is inspired by global warming from an article that I read back in 2008 when I wrote it. I think it was in the BBC News, and it was discussing how the Arctic ice shelf that's in the northern regions of our planet was melting quicker than expected. Uh, scientists were writing, sort of ringing the alarm bells early on about uh, how global warming was going to impact our lives. And at the time, I remember being, well, alarmed, of course, but also surprised because um, I don't recall very much serious coverage about global warming in mainstream media outlets. And it was around this time uh, in the mid-2000s that... Um, I started hearing more about it and started taking it more seriously myself. And so I wrote this piece, which has a lot of um, maybe the sounds you might associate with ice cracking and water flowing uh, in the piano part. Um, but uh, also this piece is meaningful for me because it was the first one I wrote when I was starting to get my doctorate at the University of Texas at Austin. And I, so I have memories of writing this in my garage studio on a very uh, beat up upright piano. Um, and perhaps some elements of that um, piano, the sound of it and this sort of un unintended sounds of it uh, made its way into, into this piece. So again, thanks to Brian Mark for, for playing this. And I, I hope you will enjoy White Parasol. Thank you.
La Voix du Dauphin, or in English, The Voice of the Dolphin, is a piece that was composed in 2007 when I was living in San Francisco, California at the time, and was premiered the following year at the European American Musical Alliance Summer Program in Paris, France. La Voix du Dauphin is deeply inspired by the inherent beauty and behavioral patterns of these creatures. Throughout this work, you will hear a simple melody that is juxtaposed and varied, depicting the actions and behavior of a dolphin, such as its communication with other sea creatures and other bodily exercises, for example, diving in and out of the water, which is stereotypical of the traits for this particular mammal. Although the flute has been associated with birds and past musical literature, I also felt the instrument bears a striking similarity to the simple and apparent fluidity of dolphins in addition to fitting so well with expressions of the sea. The melody in this piece is the message or the true voice from one of the most highly regarded species of the animal kingdom, as it pleads for transparent mutual dialogue with its common man. This is the third time Helen will be performing this work, as she, she has performed it previously in the UK when I was living in England. So I'm really excited to hear another performance from her home in London, this time from the other side of the pond. I hope you enjoy it.
Hi everyone, my name is Judy Bansel and I'm the composer of the piece Sirens. Now, this piece was really interesting to write actually because when I was first approached to do it, it was a collaboration between uh, Heidi Doppler Dance Theater, the Los Angeles Marine Institute, Altasi, which is a, a sort of marine business incubator, um, and also Los Angeles Opera. And just in that partnership, it kind of defined for me the themes that will become central to the piece that you're about to hear. So it's about, in a sense, it's about the ocean, it is about conservation and protecting our environment, and it's about kind of human hubris and the forms that that can take. Now, in the Odyssey, of course, um, and in Greek mythology in general, the sirens are these creatures that are half bird, half woman. And I always thought they were fascinating because of how they, they represent this idea of something that is incredibly beautiful, incredibly alluring, um, but also ultimately dangerous. And of course, in the story, the siren, the uh, excuse me, the sailors don't realize this until after they're already crashed on the rocks. And to me, that seems such a powerful metaphor in a lot of ways for our relationship with um, you know the environment as a whole, but the ocean in particular. So in this piece, which is scored for an electronic track and three voices, um, what you're going to hear in the background, the electronics are all kind of representing this voice of the ocean. And they do that through samples of bird sounds and whale sounds and a bunch of manipulation. And over top of that, the singers that you're going to hear, they are the sirens, but in this version of the story, they're also representing the human voice, really, and they're representing um, what we sometimes do to shape the environment around us. So without being too literal about it, the piece is in a sense just about this kind of interaction between the voice of the ocean and this human voice. It's also the voice of the sirens. And uh, I hope ultimately something aspirational about where we might wind up and where we might take that relationship in the long term. Yeah. 
Hello everyone, I'm Madeline Hawking and I'm so excited to be a part of this concert that raises donations for the Coalition for Rainforest Nations and draws attention to the beauty of the world around us, which now needs our protection more than ever. Tonight I will be performing a beautiful work for violin and electronics by Darian Thomas, a badass performer composer based in Brooklyn. The piece is titled Fluid and Darian describes composing the piece while meditating on the idea of a body of water interacting with different civilizations over millennia. The piece is specifically inspired by the Yanaguana River in San Antonio, Texas. The Payaya people gave the river its name, which means refreshing waters. Um, I just want to say thank you so much to Brian Mark for organizing and editing all the videos together, to all the other performers for their hard work, and to the viewers for watching, supporting, and donating. So without further ado, please enjoy Fluid. Thank you. 
Thank you very much for joining us this evening, and I hope everyone is safe and healthy in these uncertain times, wherever you are across the globe. I want to thank all the performers and composers who participated in this special event, including Skull Street Studio in Brooklyn that had recorded the two piano works performed by myself. Just a reminder, we are hoping to raise donations from this concert for any company that is tackling the global warming crisis. So we decided on the Coalition for Rainforest Nations. If you can, kindly go to www.rainforestcoalition.org forward slash donations if you would like to help out this organization and the greater need for awareness of this vital issue. Please join us for our next concert called Ensemble in Visual Motion, which will feature works by composers all accompanied by various types of visual components. It was supposed to take place in Los Angeles, California on the 30th of April, but has been postponed indefinitely due to the coronavirus epidemic, though we are planning a virtual streaming concert in the next few months. Take care and see you soon.